April 12th, 2004 on Easter Sunday, my son was murdered on 20th and Edgemont Avenue. Uh, I, he was murdered by a friend. Michael uh, Crops is the young man who killed my son, but they were friends. They have been friends since they were six years old. He used to live across the street from us and he used to come over and play with my son. We would go on trips and all that kind of stuff. So we had a very good relationship and he moved from the neighborhood. And then when I used to see him every now and we always hugged and we always talked, I always checked on him, see how he was doing. And that's my son and him was walking home. My son had just called me and told me, mom, I'm on my way. It was Easter Sunday, he said, I'm, I'll be home. I'm getting, you know, for us to, to have Easter dinner. And I said, fine, everything is ready. It was my, my husband now, but he's really, he, at that time, we were just going out and my daughter, Jovan, and um, he called me, hung up the phone, and in a matter of maybe 10 or 15 minutes, I saw all these, my neighbor, Tina, she had one of those uh, systems where you can hear what's going on in a scanner. So she said to me, she said, Pat, she came outside, she said, Pat, somebody, in our neighborhood has gotten shot. And I said, who is it? She said, I don't know. So we, both of us were standing on the porch and we looked up again and all these kids were running to the house. And a couple of one of my son's friends telling me that Will had gotten shot. So that was the beginning of my whole life being turned inside out. I always was an activist because when I went to college, I was an activist on my camp at the Virginia State uh, College in Petersburg, Virginia. So I was activist there. I joined all kinds of political things. So I've always been an activist, but uh, that just sort of like flipped me into a whole nother different realms of things. I, I, I grieved. I. It took me a couple years before I really got myself really back into the swing of things. I joined Mothers in Charge. I became an activist in Mothers in Charge. We did, went from Mothers in Charge to Women of Strength. And then after that, uh, my son's friend, Neil Regino, and about three other gentlemen, because my son was a soccer player, he played soccer internationally. He played us uh, here nationally. And they just felt like he was a good kid and they wanted to do something. So we created the William Triple Youth Development Foundation. That's where, that's when we started really working in the community. And that's when we started our initiative. First initiative was to just to keep, teach children how to play soccer. And that's what we were doing. We did it at the uh, Chester High's uh, field, the one closer to Chester High Air Park area. That's where we first originally started. And we went there, we went to Swarthmore College. Swarthmore College uh, did some work with us. And I just always like to say that we were here before the Philadelphia Union was here. We were playing soccer in the city of Chester before the union was here. And then as the union, uh, Rob Smith became uh, one of the vice presidents there. And then we built a relationship with the uh, Philadelphia Union. And then we, cre we, we were just doing soccer at that time. And then... Um, so it's grown, uh, it's grown from just from, soccer to more than that. To more than that. And then after, from that point, that's when we... Uh, I, I thought of I, the gift of God. God gave me this gift to... We needed to do something for the grieving children. And I really... From the relationship that I built with White, Whitener, we were playing soccer there, and I met this kid who had lost his father, had murdered his mother, and his father was in prison. His mother was deceased, and he was about five years old, and he cried the whole entire time. And I just kept saying, "He doesn't need to be here with me at a soccer camp. He needs to be at another." type of environment. So that's where it was the beginning of the thought process for camp encouragement. And then we've been doing camp encouragement for, this will be our seventh year. And uh, we also have Jovan's Healing Center, which is a grief uh, program for adults. So if an adult in the community needs some counseling, 
They come to us at every second um, Thursday of the month. And then we have a facilitator who actually, her name is Anitra Green, and she comes on and the parents or whomever it is, gets a chance to talk about the loved one. She also gives them some tools to use to be able to maneuver through the grief. Yeah, Anitra is a good friend of the Housing Authority. Yes. Um, we've worked together with her a lot and she, you know, she grew up here. Um, a great person. Uh, yes. So I, I didn't realize Camp Encouragement was into its seventh year now. Um, so let's focus on that for a minute. Okay. Um, what do you want people to know? Uh, how do you want, how, how do you want people to get hooked up with it if they're not aware of it already? Okay, Camp Encouragement this year, for the last two years, we were doing it virtual uh, because of the pandemic. So this year, we look for a couple locations we couldn't really find it and for the first the last three years before we went virtual I was doing it at my church at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Twin Oaks but because of the pandemic and our, my pastor was not comfortable with having folks inside the facility we had to start looking for some place and we found Park Avenue Community Center and Swarthmore and we were able to uh, you know build a relationship and they are going, that's where we're going to have our programming this year at Swaf at uh, Park Avenue Community Center. It's going to be from June 20th to the 30th. This year, we're moving it from one week to two weeks, and we're really excited about it. We uh, gives us an opportunity to be able to work with more children. We have uh, um, Alex Johnson, who is going to be the counselor there for us. And the let me, let me start back. It's going to be from uh, hours are from nine to three. And the age is going to be from six to 12. Those are the ages that we're going to uh, going to be able to take. And it's going to be from nine to three. We have uh, Alex Johnson, who is going to be our counselor for the programming. We have uh, uh, and she's from Chester Community Coalition, and she has worked in the past with us, with our children. Uh, we have Susan Dennis, who is like the program director. She's been with me since conception, and she makes sure, she's the one that oversees the kids, makes sure that all the programming is going the way that it's supposed to. We have uh, Alex DeSavo, who is going to be the yoga instructor. She also does music with the children. And we're going to be going to, uh, we have Marge Winfan of the Art Barn Program, and it's in Melbourne, Pennsylvania. And what she's going to do with us, she's going to uh, give our kids opportunity to go out to a farm, see the animals, uh, rip and run, play, be able to uh, paint a horse, because that's, that's so, so peaceful for the children to be able to just really paint the actual horse and he just stands there with them the entire time. And then we do an art, a little art piece, we have lunch. And then this year uh, we're taking the kids to the barn museum to really let them go to the museum, let them see what a museum is all about, let them get outside of the city and just be able to, to say, oh my God, you know, cause children are creative. And it just you gives telling them- me are you telling me they paint a live horse? Yeah, they've been, we, we've been, this is our third year going there and they actually paint the horse and he just stands there. And, and he, he stands for that. The entire time. Man. He, he just stands there and they I, just I get, paint him all kinds of colors. I guess I'm too much of a city boy. I have not known about that. I'm yes. glad you asked Steve, because I was thinking it was like a piece of paper. I never no. thought that they were actually painting. Yeah, I'm like, and, and he it's, stands there and takes that, as you said. Yes, and it's like a, it's if they have different um, storage set, not storage set, but little sections where they have maybe like eight to ten horses there, and the children get a chance to go and visit them. They go, they they have a complete tour of the place, and. This year, I'm trying to be able to work it out where the kids can actually come out and actually learn how to go horseback riding. We did that one year. We had four kids, took them out there, and they were actually able to ride the horses. I mean, it was in October, so we're going to try to do that again this year. But yes, the uh, horse just 
stands there and they just paint him with all different colors. And he just comes and he just stands there. He's just so loving. And the kids have a great time because they're expecting him to, to you know, to react on a negative way. And he, he doesn't react. He just stands there and they have their markers and they just paint him all kinds of colors. It's, it's a really peaceful time for the kids. It really is. I just wonder if you have to train a horse to to do that, just to stand there and be painted. And then do they wash the horse off when it's done? I mean, how does Yes, it yes, they do. They actually get a water hose and they just wash him down and the, 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 the paint just comes right on off. And what and is the age group? They, you said they, six to 56? Beg your pardon? Six to 56. Children, like I'm 56. <laughs> yeah, you sound like me and Susan because we're amazed too. <laughs> yeah, I'd like he, to paint a horse. <laughs> yeah, he just wags that little, he just wags that little tail and they just do that thing. Long as they don't, we just make sure that they don't stand behind him. Absolutely. You know, because the kids are so excited. So we try to, we always try to stand behind him to make sure that the kids don't go front to the back of the horse. Right, but right. you know, they have a designing good time on that horse. It's a great time. That's about the only thing I know about horses. Don't stand behind it. Yeah, don't stand behind it. You know what, Steve? People can never say that they don't learn something here at Building Community. I mean, <laughs> no, how many people, and I'm, I want you to be honest if you're watching this, have ever heard of people painting a live horse? You know, raise your hand and admit that you're one of those who've never heard of such a thing in your life. You, you're not alone because we've never heard of it either. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I have some pictures of it. I really do. I can have you pictures. get us some? Because I think I think that'll be very helpful if we, sure. if we can show sure. some of that. In, yeah, in the, sure. Yes, I, I, I got I got all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, even if you've got video, I could take some great video I and integrate some I video. Do, I think I have video too. Great. Well, we'll take we'll, I, I, we'll start with the, the pictures. The pictures are enough, but if the video, you can't Photoshop video. Well, you can. But no. <laughs> I think I could do something with some video. <laughs> Oh, I have, I have all that kind of stuff. 